All right, so it's 5.30 in the morning and I'm about to go to the gym because I'm insane. But I'll explain why in a second. All right, we're back from the gym now and it is very cold outside, but we made it and it's only 6.30, which means we have so much time left for activities for the rest of the day and I have to be busy, so... Let's get into it. So what the hell am I doing waking up at 5 in the morning? Well, basically, I saw a YouTube video that was just kind of in my, like, featured videos on the home screen, and it inspired me to try this out and wake up at 5 in the morning every day. And it's kind of cheesy, I'll leave it down in the link below. Um, it's like, kind of guy-centric, so if you're a lady, it might not be the best, uh, motivator for you, but basically the guy makes a pretty good point that if you wake up at five and you start your day early, you can get a bunch of stuff done and then it's still early. I can wake up, I can have a dose of entertainment and then go to the gym and then come home, shower, be ready for the day, be clean, and then like actually start my day before I would have even have woken up before. And I'm not the kind of person who's like motivated like late into the night when it comes to learning and that sort of stuff, right? Five o'clock rolls around, it's the end of the day and I go into relaxation mode. So I lose out on all of those hours from five to 11 or midnight or whenever I was going to bed before, where if I just kind of shift that forward a little bit and I go to bed and I'm asleep by like 10, 1030, and then I wake up at five, I can have a lot more hours in the day to like be productive. And that's really what I wanna do now is be productive. I'm not at a point in my life where I think I should be relaxing. So I'm waking up at five in the morning for now and we'll see how it works. We'll see how my psyche is, how my motivation and energy levels are, how much productivity I can get done or how productive I can be. Productivity get done? That doesn't even, those aren't sentences. Maybe it's not good. Maybe I'm already confused. No, I think it's okay. Like I just will drink all of the coffee. So what am I doing with all of this time that I'm trying to be productive? Today, it's at right about nine o'clock, and what I'm doing today is I'm continuing to work through uh, Colt Steele's Advanced Web Developer Bootcamp course on Udemy, because I bought it because some people had brought it up, and I wanted to check it out and see if it was worth it and what I could grasp from it. There are things that I still don't know, and tell you guys what I thought of it. So I'm working through that. I've gone through about six hours of the course. There's like 40, 50 hours of material or something crazy like that, so we're still working Working through that. I wanted to be productive and get that stuff out of the way in the morning. I also sent a few follow-up emails for jobs that I'd heard back from or not heard back from. And I'm about to send another one, which is a really important one for the job that I'm like the closest to getting. And then also I've been getting a lot of questions in the comment section of my vlogs. And a lot of them are pretty big questions that I want to actually talk to you about as opposed to just typing out a quick response in the comments. So I'm gonna go through those throughout the day and answer them here on camera. So it's 11 o'clock now, I'm drinking my meal and it's time to answer some of your guys' questions. Amps Motto asked, make a video about what types of jobs to apply for when starting out as a front-end developer, thoughts on finding remote positions as a junior developer, and they say they just finished the front-end track on Treehouse and are having a hard time finding jobs. They're having interest, but nothing solid yet. As far as what positions to apply when starting out as a front-end dev, I would suggest applying to just about anything that has the term front-end developer. Even if there are years of experience required, most job postings are going to have years of experience required. Now, if it's something that's like five years or 10 years, even sometimes three years, if it says like senior or mid-level, it might not be a job that you're going to garner any interest in, and you can choose whether you want to apply to that or not. Personally, I'm applying to jobs with two years of experience required, three years of experience required, and sometimes even more than that, depending upon the job description as I see fit and hoping that I can at least get a nibble from them and then 
flip it in such a way to where they'll end up liking me and hiring me. As far as like position titles go, anything with like software developer, or software engineer, if it's in the front end space, if they're asking for JavaScript experience, web developer, as long as it's on the front end side, if you're looking for front end jobs, or front end engineer, front end developer, as long as it's like a front end job clearly that wants JavaScript experience and you're looking for a front end job, I would apply to those kind of positions. And for the second part of your question about remote and for the second part about remote positions, I'm not the best person to ask about looking for remote work because it's not something that I've personally done. I know that I work better as a team in a unit that is kind of condensed and all in the same area. I learn better if it's face to face. So trying to develop my skills as a developer and grow in this community, I'm not looking for remote work as of yet. Later on down the line, when I feel more comfortable working on my own and I don't feel like I need mentorship as much, remote work might be something that I look for. There are specific job boards out there like a remote.co, remoteok.io that are specifically geared towards remote work. Not always just development work, but remote work in general. And you can check those and apply to positions on those. That's probably going to be your best bet. I think Stack Overflow has a section for remote work as well. Checking out those kind of positions, those kind of job boards is you're gonna be your best bet in finding remote. Ed asked, what kind of questions were you asked? And this is specifically geared towards a phone interview that I had last week. And I just wanna say, first off, I'm going to be doing a video once I actually get a job that goes over kind of the whole experience of finding a job from start to finish and like the interview processes at different places that I had gone through. With that in mind, questions that I've been asked on phone screens include things as simple as like, what's your background? Where'd you come from? What do you like about development? What do you not like? What did you do at your previous job? Tell me about projects you work on on the side. All of those kind of simple generic questions that are technical in some senses, but not technical in another. And I think striking a good balance and answering those with technical and non-technical responses is a good thing. You want to make sure that you show like passion for what you're building or what you've been building or what you've worked on previously and passion for the development industry. And you also want to kind of throw in some technical jargon in there to show off what you know. If you sound like an authority on things when you talk about them, people are going to trust you. And that's kind of what you're going for in a phone interview. Kayla B says she's been a web developer, but she wants to move into more full stack, move past just HTML, CSS, and jQuery. My first suggestion for that would be to learn a more in-depth front-end technology than jQuery. If you want to be a front-end developer on web applications, you're going to to probably want to know a framework or a library in the realm of Angular or React or Vue because that's what those things are mostly written in. Past that, if you're looking to become a full stack developer, if you're learning Angular, there's a stack called the Mean Stack, which includes Node and Express and MongoDB. It's a great thing to learn. If you're just trying to learn how to be a better web developer full stack and you're wanting to learn like a PHP or a Ruby on Rails kind of syntax, And if you're looking to learn new technologies, you know, become more full stack, learn more about the back end if you're a front end developer or the front end if you're a back end developer. My typical workflow on that is I have a Treehouse account and I use that to get familiar with a subject. So if I'm trying to learn React, I'll go through the React course on Treehouse. Or if I'm trying to learn PHP, I would go through the PHP course on Treehouse. And I think they do a really good job of giving you a base level understanding of that technology. And then I'll go to Udemy and find a course that really dives deep into that specific subject. Schmack asks, where do you stay? I am currently in the Raleigh-Durham area of North Carolina, also known as the Research Triangle. That's where I live. So Waldo asks, is there going to come a point if you're still unemployed where you're going to start feeling that the jobs really are starting to go away? I think this is a great question, Waldo, and I disagree with your premise. So I will be the first one to tell you that it's taken me longer to find a job than what I wanted it to, but the average in finding a job in this kind of career field from what I've read is like 45 to 60 days. And that's for somebody who's got a lot more experience than I do and people who are just starting out. So kind of the average there is 45 to 60 days. I'm still well within that region of time and I've got a couple of leads that are really close to being something. So I don't necessarily think that the jobs are going away. I will also be the first one to tell you that it is about the absolute worst time to try to find a job in development right now. Not in the realm of the job market, but just in the calendar year. We're coming up to the end of the year. Thanksgiving just happened. Christmas is right around the corner. And a lot of development shops tend to slow down production at this time of year. A lot of people going on vacation. So if they don't have the mentorship or the senior level development resources there to kind of 
teach you and get you onboarded, it's harder for them to hire right now. I've had feedback from multiple companies that they're really interested in me as a candidate, but they're not interested in me right now because they need to get past the holidays and come January 1st, they'll reevaluate what they need. So with that in mind, my job search is taking longer than I want it to, yes, but I don't think that should deter you from thinking that there are no jobs left out there. All right, so knocked out some of those questions. I finished my Huel and I'm about to go chill for a little bit. It's 11 now and yeah, just chill for a little bit, watch some YouTube, watch some TV, and then I'm gonna get back on my grind. So I will see you guys in a little bit. So it's 2.30 now and I am like hitting a wall. My head kind of hurts and I feel like I need a nap. It probably wasn't the best idea to start this five in the morning wake up time right after a holiday weekend. But here we are. So I'm going to go and hit up the gym again, round two, I guess. I'm gonna lift weights this time. Leah's gonna say hi to the camera here soon, I think. But I'm gonna lift some weights. And I did cardio this morning, so now that, and try to like bust through this like, I don't know, downward spiral into lethargy that I'm hitting right now, and come back and be a little bit more productive before the end of the day. We'll see how it happens. Back from the gym now, and I feel like that was a really good decision because I was about to fall asleep and take a nap, and I hate naps, and I feel so much better now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut today's video off now. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. If you have any more comments, questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll respond down there or in a future video. If you haven't already, feel free to hit the subscribe button. It's down there as well. If you want to, hit that like button because they are super awesome and they make me smile. I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.